Um, so today I will talk about optical generation of particle-like localized structures in cholesteric liquid crystals. Um, I am coming from uh, the Department of Physics uh, at the University of Colorado at Boulder, where I am also with the Liquid Crystal Materials Institute Center and the Renewable and Sustainable Energy Institute. Uh, and so today I will um, give a presentation that's based on work of uh, uh, several grad students and the postdoc. Uh, um, so postdoc Tevuldi and uh, grad students Paul Ackerman, who is here with us, and also Rafael Chuvedi and Jian uh, Chi. Uh, and so during this school, we already had uh, several uh, introductions to liquid crystals. So you all know by now what they are. Um, this slide is just to remind you, those are anisotropic fluids that stand in between isotropic fluids and crystalline solids, combining the properties of the two in a very unique way, so that they flow just like liquids do, however, at the same time, they also have the properties of uh, orientational ordering and anisotropy, just like solid crystals. And so some of the more interesting and unique uh, types of liquid crystals are cholesteric liquid crystals and again L.C. Chen uh, gave a very nice introduction to those during his lecture um, as well as to blue phases, cholesteric blue phases. And so just to remind you, in cholesteric liquid crystal phase we have a helicoidal structure of the liquid crystal director field uh, and the distance over which the director twists by 360 degrees is called cholesteric pitch. Those materials are typically formed by uh, molecules that have that lack mirror symmetry, so they have chiral centers like the one you can see in here. Um, and uh, uh, in the case of cholesteric two phases, the building blocks are the so-called double twist cylinders where the molecules twist in all radial directions from the center of the cylinder um, and then those double twist cylinders are packed into the cubic lattices forming uh, uh, the uh, uh, different types of blue phases. So in my talk today I will deal a lot with uh, different types of defects and so um, as you know those are um, discontinuity in in the molecular alignment and director field of liquid crystals. And then here you can see two different types of point defects. Right? So uh, those defects are point singularities where orientation of liquid crystal molecules and also liquid crystal director is not well defined. Right? So in fact, uh, the liquid crystal is melting to isotropic state in the, um, uh, the nano-sized uh, volume of um, uh, in the center of those defects. Um, we'll also deal with uh, the line singularities. Uh, so in here you can see a number of, of different discriminations which are line defects uh, that run perpendicular to the screen. Um, and so um, just like in the case of point defects, the orientation of molecules and liquid crystal director is not well defined um, along those lines. Um, and uh, uh, typically, the point defects are characterized by charge, uh, and the line defects are characterized by, uh, which is in here, topological charge, uh, and the line defects are characterized by the strengths of discrimination. So the strengths of discrimination simply tells us uh, by how much the orientation of liquid crystal director changes as one would circumnavigate the uh, disclination by going by 360 degrees around the defect line. And so in this case, for example, director orientation changes by 180 degrees as you would go around the defect uh, full circle. And so therefore, the strength of this defect line is 1 over 2. In the case of this one, it's minus 1 over 2 because uh, the uh, director rotates in the opposite direction. Um, and so in my talk, I will 
um, extensively used the uh, different three-dimensional optical imaging techniques. And uh, during my previous lectures in uh, Montevideo during the first uh, week of the Eichmann School, I already discussed uh, the different ways of imaging uh, molecular alignment in liquid crystals in three dimensions. Uh, in this particular case, I will use three photon polarized cell fluorescence imaging. Um, and so, just to remind you, I'll show this slide again. Um, so, uh, what we're doing here is we uh, use the liquid crystal molecules, such as 5CB, as dye molecules themselves. Right? So, there is no additional dye doped or, wave, uh, or used for labeling of the liquid crystals. Um, and uh, instead, we excite the uh, 5CB molecules of the liquid crystal that we'll use in these studies. Uh, and so, the uh, fluorescence from those molecules could be obtained if one, for example, were to excite them uh, at 327 nanometers, but this is obviously not convenient to do because it's uh, in UV, where all lenses are not very transparent. Um, and uh, instead, we can use two photon uh, excitation or three photon excitation. Right? So, uh, this schematic, I hope, um, <coughs> helps you to remember what we discussed during the previous lectures. And then the fluorescence is detected um, in the uh, spectral range from 400 to 450 nanometers. Uh, and because uh, both uh, absorption and fluorescence transition dipole moments of uh, 5CB molecule are along the length of this molecule, uh, the <coughs> absorption and fluorescence is strongly dependent on polarization of uh, the used excitation light. And so we have a very strong signal whenever the orientation of those molecules is parallel to polarizer, uh, pretty much no fluorescence or very weak fluorescence when they are mutual or orthogonal. Uh, and at the intermediate angles, because in here we have three photon process, right? Um, we have uh, the emitted fluorescence uh, scaling with the uh, uh, scaling as cosine to the sixth power of the angle between the director. Uh, and the polarization of the used excitation light. If we use unpolarized detection, and when we use polarized detection, um, it scales as cosine to the eighth power of the sample. Right? And so, uh, again, we use an integrated setup um, for uh, the work that I'll present today, uh, where we can do three-dimensional nonlinear optical imaging of the samples and uh, holographic optical manipulation at the, at the very same time because those two techniques are integrated with the very same uh, inverted optical microscope. Right. And so for excitation we use classified laser, the photonic crystal fiber and a spatial light modulator. And so I will not go into more details because we already discussed this back in Montreal during the previous lectures. But what I want to stress in here is that this setup allows us to generate three-dimensional distributions of light intensity, which also means three-dimensional distributions of electric field of the optical wave, um, and at the same time also image how those distributions of light intensity will affect the director field of the liquid crystal by use of this nonlinear optical microscopy. And so here I show you just an example how we can uh, shape light by use of um, the holographic optical tweezers. And uh, as we do it, we obviously um, <coughs> um, generate different patterns of electric field of the optical wave uh, in the sample of interest. Um, and so the movie in here demonstrates how we can use it to manipulate, for example, um, an array of particles in three dimensions. So you can see those particles going in and out of focus uh, as we use holographic laser tweezers to manipulate them 
um, uh, in the sample, but by use of the nonlinear optical microscopy, we can, um, I don't know what's happening. Um, uh, by use of nonlinear optical microscopy, we can actually visualize what happens in the cross section of the liquid crystal sample, right? So we can simply take a cross section um, along the line in here, um, and we can see that uh, the two particles, one in focus, one out of focus, that you can see in this bright field optical microscopy image, are actually located uh, in different um, locations across the cross section of liquid crystal sample. And the layered structure that you can see in here corresponds to a prostatic liquid crystal. Moreover, we can use uh, those holographic laser tweezers to uh, move the particles across the sample and um, um, across the prostatic liquid crystal layer structure and see how the director field around those particles is perturbed because of this motion that we again. Uh, I want to stress induced by uh, the laser box. Uh, now, uh, in my today's talk, I will uh, focus on oops, um, on optical generation of localized structures. Uh, but before I proceed with that, I want to remind you something that uh, you have seen uh, already a lot during this summer school that. Liquid crystals are strongly responsive to external fields, right? And that's why we so often use them in um, spatial light modulators and different types of displays, including flexible displays and so on, because we can apply one volt of AC electric field or so and realign the liquid crystal director by the electric field of um, uh, AC low frequency field. Uh, so in which case, what happens is that uh, the liquid crystal director aligns along the electric field lines because of the coupling um, term in the free energy uh, that I've shown here, um, uh, which needs to be minimized in order to uh, minimize overall free energy of the liquid crystal. Right? And so, um, now, what if we focus a tightly, um, a high intensity laser beam um, into the liquid crystal sample in a very similar geometry? Well, uh, in this case, we also have fairly strong uh, electric field of the optical wave, which is, however, the optical frequency. Um, and so um, it's well known in the field of liquid crystals that uh, we can induce realignment of the liquid crystal director field where the liquid crystal molecules or director and director uh, realign, rotate uh, to align parallel to the electric field of the optical wave of the laser beam which would be parallel to the polarization of the, type, uh, of the uh, laser beam. Um, and so again, this happens in order to minimize uh, the coupling term in the free energy which I again shown here, and the only difference compared to um, the uh, case of low frequency electric field realignment that we use in this place is that in here we have delta epsilon, the electric anisotropy, which can, which is an optical frequency, simply the difference of squares of uh, extraordinary and ordinary refractive indices. Right? And the other difference is obviously that. Uh, the uh, electric field at optical frequencies in here is strongly non-uniform. Right? Um, now, uh, what we will do in the experiments that I will describe uh, is we will use the cholesterol liquid crystal um, that will be confined into a cell with vertical boundary conditions. Um, and what you um, so that the liquid crystal molecules in the director uh, will be forced to align vertically to the surface of the confining glass plates, as demonstrated in here. 
And so if you look at this picture, you already realize that those boundary conditions are not compatible with the helical structure of the cholesterol of the crystal. Right? And so that means we will have some frustration um, because we need to satisfy the boundary conditions, which are strong boundary conditions in here. Uh, and at the same time, somehow we need to satisfy the preference of liquid crystal to form the, the twisted cholesterol configuration. And I will show that the most interesting situation occurs when the thickness of the liquid crystal cell is comparable to cholesterol liquid, liquid crystal pitch. Again, the distance over which the liquid crystal molecule is twisted by 360 degrees. Um, and so, uh, indeed, if we shine, um, if we confine the liquid crystal, cholesterol liquid crystal between two glass plates, um, uh, and uh, uh, the cholesterol pitch is comparable uh, to the thickness of the liquid crystal cell, but we see that originally we have fully unwound state. So that means uh, the sample looks black between two cross polarizers, right? However, if we now shine a laser beam in different, into different locations in this liquid crystal sample, and if the intensity of the laser beam is high enough, then we can generate localized structures uh, everywhere where we shine the laser beam, right? And so those localized structures, you can see here, uh, they do not disappear after we turn off the laser beam, uh, and uh, uh, they can be studied by use of three-dimensional linear optical imaging. So what we can do is we can take a vertical cross-section uh, um, in here along this red line and simply see what is the structure that we have in the vertical cross-section. So one can obtain images similar to the one I show you here for different polarizations of excitation light. And from those images, uh, using the simple principles I described before, we can reconstruct the director field uh, of the liquid crystal in the vicinity of the structure. So what we observe is that liquid crystal molecules um, in the central plane of the liquid crystal sample simply twist by 180 degrees in all radial directions, as, as shown in here. If we now were to take a look what happens in the vertical section, what we notice is that uh, this uh, two-dimensional twist, uh, similar to what we have also in double twist cylinders uh, of uh, prosthetic blue phases, is now confined by two point defects at the top and bottom surfaces of this liquid crystal cell. And the overall structure has this rotational symmetry um, as shown in here. Right? So this cross-section corresponds to an image of this kind that you can see um, the correspond that they closely uh, uh, that they match they match each other. So we can obtain uh, three dimensional images by use of the techniques I discussed before, uh, including, for example, the one that I shown here, um, where uh, the sample was scanned in three dimensions by. Uh, <coughs> using the technique that I described, and then we can reconstruct the overall three-dimensional structure uh, of liquid crystal that we have. So um, what we realize this structure corresponds to is um, a, a double twist cylinder that's looped on itself and it's kept uh, by two point defects at the two opposite uh, substrates of the liquid crystal cell as demonstrated in here on this slide. Right? And so uh, this actually does make sense because if we uh, analyze what are the topological charges of the defects that we deal with, we realize that we do have conservation of topological charge. And conservation of topological charge is 
as important as conservation of electrostatic charge in electrostatics. Right? So what we have in here is two um, uh, minus one point defects shown in here by these little blue circles and um, a disclination loop which is plus one twist escape disclination loop um, which is equivalent to uh, uh, plus two point defect. Right? And so therefore we have plus two um, uh, charge due to the disconnection loop and two minus one charges at the opposite surfaces. Right? And so um, it's a question now, why are those structures stable? Um, and why do not they disappear as we turn off the laser beam? Uh, why can we generate them? We can understand their stability uh, by simply analyzing the elastic free energy of the crystals and so you will, you've seen this before just to remind you uh, this is um, a classic description of liquid crystal elasticity where um, one simply needs to um, minimize the elastic free energy and the three different terms that you can see in here are the splay, um, <coughs> twist and bend terms that correspond to three different classic types of distortions illustrated in here. Right, so all of those different types of distortions correspond to uh, the, uh, the uh, some free energy cost that can be then described by using the expression for free energy density that I show here in terms of the liquid crystal director denoted by M. Now there is also the K24 term, um, uh, which uh, describes the saddle spray uh, type of distortions uh, um, that are also important uh, in the case of the problem we'll discuss in here. Now, what's important to mention is that when we deal with the chiral cholesteric liquid crystal, there is an additional term uh, due to uh, the chiral symmetry of the phase. Uh, and so, because of this term, the free energy is minimized for uh, a cholesteric structure with a polygonal pitch. Um, now, however, as you remember, in our case, uh, we have the confinement of the liquid crystal sample into uh, a cell with strong vertical boundary conditions. Um, and so, in order to meet those boundary conditions, uh, we do need to have um, um, some, somehow distorted cholesteric liquid crystal structure because I already mentioned that the equilibrium cholesteric structure is not compatible uh, with those boundary conditions. And so what we see is that um, um, is that um, uh, there are two different possible stable structures um, uh, in such a geometry of liquid crystal cell. One is when we have fully unwound, unwound cholesteric liquid crystal director, so that we seem to satisfy the boundary conditions. Uh, and the other structure corresponds to the structures that we were able to generate optically that I show in here. Right? And so both of them are not ground state uh, uh, structures because that would be a cholesteric uh, structure that's, uh, however, um, <coughs> we do not observe it here because of the boundary conditions. Um, and um, the stability of those two structures can be understood if we simply analyze the elastic free energy. So um, the twist term and saddle spray term um, <coughs> are minimized for the structure on the right, the localized structure of the uh, torn, uh, the structure we call a torn, um, while the band and splay, splay terms are minimized for uh, full unwound homotropic liquid crystal structures that you can see on the left. Um, and so, um, however, uh, the twist term and saddle splay term for this structure are not minimized, they are um, uh, not minimized. And so therefore, uh, we have a frustration 
where um, there are two relatively low free energy states, one of which corresponds to fully unwound state, and the other one to the localized structure that we have just observed. Um, and so we can switch between the two structures by using the laser beam or also applying voltage. Uh, however, the structures cannot go from one state to the other state by themselves because the energy barrier that we have in here is fairly large, uh, much larger than the case of um, And so the stability of those structures can be understood by numerically minimizing uh, elastic free energy, and this can be done by uh, means of the so-called uh, relaxation method, uh, uh, so simply minimizing numerical elastic free energy. And if we do it um, for the boundary conditions, initial conditions um, <coughs> imposed by high intensity, by, by the electric field of the optical wave uh, of um, uh, the laser beam that we focus into the sample, we indeed uh, obtain a structure which resembles the one that we obtain experimentally, shown in here. Moreover, we can use this molecular uh, alignment structure to generate uh, the uh, computer simulated image um, and then compare that computer simulated image with the experimental uh, uh, image that I already showed before. And indeed, we can see a fairly close uh, similarity between the two structures, uh, between the uh, uh, experimental image and also computer simulated image shown in here. Moreover, in uh, using this numerical approach, we can also um, calculate the different terms in elastic free energy uh, for the structure of interest, and so. Uh, the, the elastic free energy density can be plotted in the vertical cross section uh, of this localized structure for different terms. So in here you can see um, the free energy density for splay term, twist term, uh, bent term, and also saddle splay term. Uh, and so you notice that uh, the free energy density within those structures is highly non uniform, right? So uh, the color scales in here depict um, the changes of the energy in, in the uh, vertical sections. And uh, you can see that the minimum of free energy, which is in blue, um, um, <coughs> for the case of play term, corresponds to fully unbound um, uh, state, which is far away from the localized structure in here, uh, while the splay term, uh, uh, the, the free energy density of the splay term uh, is fairly high uh, in the vicinity of the defects in the localized structure. Um, this is also the case for the band term, however, for the twist and set of splay terms, we can see the situation is reversed because within the localized structure uh, we have minimum free energy density which is in blue but uh, the free energy density is fairly uh, high uh, farther away from the localized structure and indeed if we now simply add those different terms um, we can see that uh, other explanation of the stability of those structures makes sense because um, <coughs> Within the localized structure, we have uh, the twisted configuration of liquid crystal director field. Therefore, the free energy density is minimized. But then there are those regions with splay and band distortions that are highly costly in terms of elastic free energy, uh, in particular <coughs> splay and band terms. And therefore, uh, the overall free energy density for this structure is comparable uh, to that of fully unwound static liquid crystal. And therefore, both uh, fully unbound state and the uh, torus structures can be stable for a long time because they both correspond to states with fairly low elastic energy. And by choosing different parameters, 
experimentally we can make one of them uh, being more stable or the other, depending uh, on what exactly we would like to do. Um, you can also see uh, uh, what we just discussed, uh, the, the stability and the free energy cost uh, associated with different parts of this uh, localized structure uh, from the free energy density as a surfaces depicted in here, as I already mentioned it, uh, the uh, free energy is fairly low within the central part of this uh, localized structure where we have um, a double twist cylinder looped on itself, so we have a lot of twist of the liquid crystal reactor, but the free energy density is high in the vicinity of the point defects uh, where we also have strong bend and spline distortions. And the overall free energy density of the structures comparable to that of fully unbound corrosive liquid crystal stain. Um, <clears throat> and so um, now we can construct a topological skeleton of the director field um, that we reconstructed from uh, the computer simulations and indeed one can notice the two point singularities and the twist escaped discrimination loop uh, in the central part of the liquid crystal cell that do correspond to the experimental reconstructed director configuration that I showed before. Now it's interesting to point out similarities with um, um, the so-called skirmions that uh, has been observed in many different condensed matter systems. Uh, so um, in skirmion we have a configuration of a field which is very similar to that of the double twist cylinder that we've seen before. And again, what we have in our case is a loop of the double twist cylinder uh, because in the uh, total structure, the double twist cylinder is looped on itself and kept um, uh, by two point defects so that it can be incorporated into the uniform part field with the crystal director. Now, what I want to do next is to remind you about the so-called Laguerre, Bosch, and Vincent. Uh, during the first week, uh, we already had an introduction from Raphael Pistou um, into what those Laguerre, Bosch, and Wiens are. So, I will be very quick. Uh, as you remember, those are the optical phase singularities that can be generated by uh, using diffraction gratings with dislocations. Um, and uh, uh, in the case of those phase singularities, we have a screw dislocation in the face of light as depicted in here. Right? In terms of intensity, um, uh, we can have different donut shaped configurations. Uh, so those are depicted in here for uh, different indices, um, L indices of the Laguerre Gaussian beam. And again, I will not go into more details because we already had a fairly deep discussion uh, during the previous lectures. But what I want to show is the intensity distribution of light in the lateral cross sections of the laser beam and also in the vertical axial cross sections, so parallel to the focused laser beam uh, of uh, uh, focused Laguerre motion beam depending on the charge, right? So you can see when the charge is equal to zero, we pretty much have Gaussian beam with very familiar distribution of laser light intensity. As we increase the charge, we have the donut shaped distribution of laser light intensity. And so you can see how the light intensity changes uh, in the lateral plane and also in the plane uh, parallel to the axis of the focused laser beam. Right. Uh, and so as we increase the charge, the <coughs> size of this donut shaped uh, configuration increases. Uh, so if we were now to use Laguerre Gaussian beams to generate structures, we realize that there are more than just one uh, localized configuration that we can generate in cross-static crystals. Um, and so uh, in here, 
I just want to show a couple of those uh, that we can generate. You can see that even between two cross polarizers, they look very different. Right? So they already tell us that we can have more than just one type of configuration of the actual field generated by using the focus laser beams in polystyric liquid crystals. And we can again image those by using uh, three dimensional imaging with the approaches I described before. Uh, so those would be three dimensional images um, similar to the one we discussed in details previously. Um, and so the structure that we see here corresponds to um, the one we discussed previously where we have uh, a twisted scale discrimination loop and two point defects. But those three other structures um, are very different. And you can see it already from the images from which we can reconstruct what is the actual director field. Um, and so um, uh, I will therefore summarize on this slide what types of director field configurations we can achieve by focusing the get Gaussian beams of the different chart into polystatic liquid crystal. It turns out that all of those configurations have something in common. They all have uh, the double twist cylinder uh, looped on itself as depicted in here. And, um, uh, however, um, some of them are kept uh, packed by um, point defects, just like, in the, in, just like in the case of configuration that we have seen before. Um, or some of them are uh, kept by uh, rings of discriminations um, similar to the one that you can see here. And this does make sense because, um, uh, as I already mentioned previously, the uh, double twist cylinder looped on itself has topological charge plus two. Uh, and so if we incorporate such a structure into um, a uniform director field, uh, which we have in our samples, uh, then we need to conserve topological charge. And we can do it uh, by using other defects of opposite topological charge. So this can be done by using minus one uh, point defects, such as hyperbolic point defects shown in here, or discrimination loops uh, uh, of minus one over two strands, uh, as you can see in here, because the loops of those discrimination lines are equivalent to minus one point D, right? And so uh, the possible configurations um, uh, that can be uh, observed are all depicted in here. So we can have either the double twist cylinder uh, looped on itself accompanied by uh, two point defects or by two discrimination loops of minus one of two strengths or by one point defect and one discrimination loop. And obviously, the uh, location of those loops and um, uh, the point defects can be interchanged. Right? So indeed, uh, we observe that all of those configurations are <coughs> present in experiments. And we can use Laguerre Gaussian beams of different charge to generate all of them and switch between the different states. So when we use Laguerre Gaussian beams of charge 9, um, so uh, then what we observe is that we can generate the torrent with the two discrimination loops as depicted in here. When we, however, um, switch uh, the uh, charge to 5, you can see that this structure transforms uh, into the structure depicted in here, and this corresponds to a configuration with one point defect and one discrimination loop. Um, now, if we change the charge to three, uh, we can see that now we have two point defects uh, and the opposite um, uh, substrates of the liquid crystal cell. Uh, so, this is something very interesting because uh, it shows we can use the singularities in the phase of light, right? the phase singularities um, in the laser beams to generate and control the defects in liquid crystals. Right? Um, and, and so 
the structures that you can generate this way are very stable and they can be further controlled by um, using external fields and this I want to demonstrate in here where we apply voltage to the liquid crystal cell um, in which we generate into structures and you can see that we can tune the size uh, of the localized structures and at some critical voltage we can even erase uh, all of the structures just a bit in here on the other hand if we were to use a material with negative dielectric and isotropy we can then increase the size uh, of the tunnels uh, and merge them uh, uh, as demonstrated here right? so it turns out that we can uh, <coughs> typically we can generate the tunnel structures um, that I was showing before using laser beams of power roughly equal to 50 milliwatt or so uh, obviously uh, the value of, of, of the needed power depends on uh, the numerical aperture objective depends on um, uh, uh, on the material properties of the liquid crystal. Uh, typically, it's on the order of 50 milliwatt. However, we can further uh, decrease the needed laser power by uh, doping the liquid crystal with fuller uh, C60. Uh, and so, in this case, what happens is. Um, um, when we go the liquid crystal with fuller uh, we can use light to um, <coughs> segregate the fuller into the surfaces this then pre-distorts the liquid crystal uh, um, alignment at, at the surfaces and um, um, helps to generate the localized structures as, uh, as it's depicted in here moreover we can um, further then use applied voltage to tune the size of the structures so for example you can see we generated an array of torrents as depicted on this uh, image in here and then by applying uh, voltage of 5 volts or so we um, uh, were able to control the size of such torrent structures then after uh, turning off the, the voltage uh, you can see that um, some of the tonal structures return it back um, uh, and the other ones stayed in some other metastable configuration right? um, and so you can see that um, therefore we can have bistable switching of the localized tonal -like structures um, and so in this case however what we have is uh, we are running out of time okay. um, all right, so I'll have to uh, rush a little bit through the presentation and maybe I'll uh, show more results uh, during my uh, lecture number four. Um, and so uh, um, the uh, localized structures that you can see in here have their point defects located at the surface uh, of the confining glass plates. Right? And this can be seen from the vertical cross-section depicted in here. What's important to mention is that um, uh, the size of those structures which are generated by use of doping uh, C60 and then um, uh, segregating the C60 to surfaces can be tuned continuously which is very different from the torrents which are generated directly by, by focusing um, the more high intensity laser beams. Um, <coughs> So I'll stop here, but um, I will um, uh, go all the way to conclusions and mention that um, uh, we were able to use the phase singularities in the laser beams to control the defects in uh, liquid crystal materials and what I was not able to show you, but uh, the slides that I'm running through right now probably demonstrate this is that we can then in return use uh, the defects in liquid crystals generated by, by, by laser beams to control uh, the phase similarities in the laser beams. Thank you for your attention.